Hi, I'm Sean. I'm Rhonda. Let's talk about some healthy practices in your marriage. So Dr. John Gottman and his colleagues have done a lot of research since the 70s on marriages and they have found that there are some things that are consistently in healthy marriages. Wouldn't we want to do those things? We would. All right, let's, let's talk ta about them. <laughs> First one is to actively pay attention to each other. <clears throat> So that means that I have to be thinking about my spouse. Don't a lot of time when we're home, we're tired, we want to unwind from the day, we're not giving our best. And so if we were giving our best, when we come home, when we come together in the mornings, in the evenings, we would be focused on our spouse, not on self. You know, we have to practice being <laughs> able to set aside the events of the day and really be mindful with where we are at the moment. And so we're paying attention to what our spouse says, those bids, for attention, for engagement, for a comment, for a look, for a smile. <coughs> we're noticing those things yeah. and we're connecting with them. Another thing found in healthy marriages are, is spontaneous expressions of affection and admiration. This means that we slow down enough to express the things we might be thinking anyway, like Wow, you look great. You look so handsome. You're so pretty today. Do we think those things but not say them? Are there other things? Wow, I really appreciated that you helped prepare supper with me today. Yeah. You know, sometimes it's just a matter of opening our mouth to let our spouse know the positive things that we're thinking about them that day. Right, and just like, don't we focus on the Lord? Don't we praise Him and worship Him and thank Him? Well, we would submit to you that the Christ Church relationship which is our model as husband and wife, would show us in that. We should be thinking on the positive qualities of our spouse yeah. and expressing that gratitude, admiration. Wow, I love this about you. Maybe we're not slowing down to think about it enough, but we need to. Yeah, these are all very simple <laughs> things, but responding to each other with interest, really caring mm -hmm. about and being interested in something that interests your spouse. We can engage in conversations that someone else is interested in and we need to show a genuine curiosity for what's going on with the spouse. It's not all about me. Yeah. I'm, I'm here to serve my spouse, not <clears throat> to um, fulfill myself. So if there's something Sean is interested in, of course I want to show interest. We want to also have an overall positive assessment of our spouse. We don't want to allow negativity to creep in in the way we see them. You know, um, it's important that we set a guard around our thoughts and that we do not receive, do not allow ourselves to think on the things that are not godly, not holy, not from the Holy Spirit, even about our spouse, yes. You know, Philippians 4.8 <laughs> tells us what things to think on. It says, whatever <clears throat> things are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, and of a good report, think on these things. And then 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5 tells us what to do with thoughts that go against that. Right. We are supposed to grab those thoughts and make them obedient. <clears throat> so if there's a thought about my spouse, well, that was insensitive, that was rude, he doesn't care. Those are not God's thoughts. Right. And so I reject those thoughts and I think, you know what, it may appear that way, but that doesn't make it true. You know, next thing we want to be able <clears throat> to ex accept the difference that our spouse has. <clears throat> and so there might be some things that can't be changed. There may be some male-female things going on. There may be uh, where our spouse is mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. And we need to be okay with where our spouse is. Let the Lord deal with the growth there. Yeah, too many times we're trying to shape our spouse into our image and think that, you know, if you were more like me, we wouldn't be having this disagreement. Another thing has to do with um, the wife's gentle startup and the husband's acceptance of influence from his wife. We women, when we get into distress, tend to have a harsh startup what that means the way we begin the way we initiate a discussion can come across as abrasive to a man you know sometimes we <laughs> don't do a good job of hiding our our inner emotions and feelings and it shows on our face and our tone of voice these yeah. are the things that we need to be aware of when we're bringing up an issue and it's sloppy to say well that's just the way i feel well that's just the way i am well for a healthy marriage you need to change that you know a <laughs> it's not okay yeah 
That's right. A, a husband's ability to receive influence from his wife is a very positive trait in a marriage. Right. And influence, receiving influence doesn't mean he's led around by the nose, that every whim or wish she has, he does. No, I think of it as he seriously considers or prayerfully considers what she's presenting so that she feels heard and understood. It doesn't mean that everything, husbands, that your wife presents, that you're saying, you know, yes, ma'am, you know, we're going to do that. It means you're giving her the, the gratification of feeling like you really heard her story, you really heard her out. She was able to share her heart, and you connect with that. You know, as the head, it's kind of obvious that a man would have an influence over his wife. But, you know, it's biblical for a man to look upon his wife as his God-given helper. Yeah. And, um, you know, in Genesis, to uh, pursue after her, to mm -hmm. cleave to her. And when, when a man does that, he's allowing himself to be shaped by her. She may allow herself to be um, led, in a sense, by him, but his leading is shaped by her. And so you mm. can see that oneness kind of going on in there. Yeah. A lot of times a <laughs> wife can repeat herself when she doesn't feel heard. And a, a husband can interpret that many times as, well, she's trying to force me to do it her way. <laughs> and she's really just wanting him to be influenced and to hear her out. And it would be important at that moment to take time to make sure you're connecting with what she said and not just sharing what you think about what she said. That, that makes a person feel heard if you can restate, make a connecting statement, whether you agree or not, and pursue more information to make sure you really understood it. Yeah. Another quality present in healthy marriages is honoring each other's dreams. You know, we all have dreams and goals within our heart and things that we see that we want to do or accomplish. And being able to connect with what your spouse is dreaming is really important. Do you take the time to even talk about that? Mm. Do you maybe go on a date and talk? What do you, about, what do you dream? What are your goals in, uh, in your, for yourself, for us as a couple, for our family, spiritually, mentally, emotionally, socially? you know, vocationally, educationally, you know, in all these areas. Yeah. What do you want to do? What do you want to accomplish? Where do you hope to be mm -hmm. next month, next year, in five years, ten years? You know, we need to yeah. be able to open up and be able to dream um, where there is no vision, he said, that people mm -hmm. perish. So we really need to have the ability to dream and to connect with our spouses. Dream. Having shared purposes is another thing you see in healthy marriages. You know, working together <laughs> as a team. He said the two shall be one. The things that we join together <laughs> and work together on help create that sense of connection in our marriage. You know, when a couple is um, fighting and fussing over every little thing, they can't have a big picture focus. They're too stuck in the moment and in the details of life. Can you see the importance of being able to get past that, talk through those things, and then say, okay, What's our ministry? What are we called to? Why are we here? And why did God put us together?